ти серце моє, дачу за морем широким, кину ти жельем свом. You won't find a neighborhood like this again. You know, where people, uh, there's, I can take you to certain homes where families have been in the same building for over 100 years. That's how it is. We put our roots down here. This is where we want to live and die. My father came in 1912. The parish was organized in 1912. Uh, you know, you had a lot of people that came from Europe that understood the tradition uh, within their very soul. And as poor people, they put all their pennies aside, all their pennies, and built these great churches to protect their own ethnic identity in this melting pot. When you happen to be Croatian and you happen to come from St. Jerome, you have a dedication toward your parish and your home roots. You know, he used to say, you never forget from whence you came. Uh, it was the church that kept us all together. Uh, it was what kept us connected to our homeland. And though we were born here, we always felt that we were tied with our, you know, with our parents' ancestral homeland. St. Jerome's is a hub. Everybody comes from all over and we come to St. Jerome's. It's our home. Tradition is important because it brings people together. When I say people together, I mean it brings past and present into one. And that's where people feel at home. They refresh their memories. Well, originally the immigrants that settled in Bridgeport, the Croatian immigrants, came from the Dalmatian region of Croatia, which is the coastal region. And uh, that region has a very large a shrine to Our Lady of Seen, which is the icon that you'll see carried today in the procession. 105 years, uh, uh, starting in 1906. So this is a path to the procession that goes to, uh, up Princeton Avenue, then Wells uh, Street uh, down south to Sachs Park, and then back on Princeton Avenue to the church. It takes about an hour and a half. The classes had to uh, march, and each teacher or each nun was responsible to make sure that her, her class was there. We had to walk with them. That procession, the, the feast itself, is recognized even by the city of Chicago as the only feast in the city of Chicago that's been uh, on the same date in the same neighborhood for 100 years. The Croatians are a very strong ethnic group. Uh, uh, they stay very active even today. Uh, the Feast of Assumption, August 15th, a great celebration, roasting a uh, barbecue of lambs and things like that, and the mass and the celebration that goes on for a long time, and they've kept it alive. I think this is the, the part that teaches us that it's important to recognize your roots, and this is the place where you keep your language, keep your uh, culture alive. And I think there's a whole group of us that are like this, whether you're a north side or a south side or a west sider, these traditions, these parades, festivals, they bring us back. Uh, my wife is uh, Croatian, and I am actually Italian. And so uh, this, this uh, tradition that's going, been going on in this community for over 100 years. And so once you, uh, once you get involved, it, it becomes part of your life. Shannon Rovers! Shannon Rovers! You know, this is clearly what makes the city of Chicago what it is, uh, with over 600 events of this kind and this nature, ethnic neighborhood festivals. Whether you're from this neighborhood or not, these are what people love to come to about the city of Chicago. This is what people love. The food, the music, the people. 
because many of our people are not just Croatians but also Italians and uh, Polish and uh, Irish and all, all the good nations that come together to make us a, a diverse but a very strong uh, parish. And so we need festivals like this that brings the uh, community outside of the church itself into the streets uh, and uh, shows the uh, world that uh, the faith is a partner to everything that happens and more than that it's a place where People not only worship, they also celebrate. It's a big honor. Like you walk with her on your shoulder all day, and when you come back and put her in the, sh in the church, you could still feel the weight from the um, carrier on your shoulders. She's still there. She still reminds you that you have to be good and spiritual and stay true to your faith. because when people are, are, are really nourished in their faith and they have sustained the community with very genuine traditions and, and also the language, the culture, and, and in that sense, they are keeping that, that uh, stage in the lives of families alive. When I hear at the end of that Mass, that's, that's the big thing for me. I'm very goes by. I know some people probably like the food and like the procession, and I like all that also. But for me, that moment in the Mass, after you sing, um, uh, after the priest is giving us the uh, end of Mass statement, then we sing uh, the Epanasha Domovino, uh, the national anthem of Croatia, and then we sing Zdravo Diego. That's, to me, the high point of everything. That means who we are. That means why this church exists. That means that we, we are in the community of faith with all Catholics. And we also carry one special trademark, and that is that we are Croatian and our, our Bogi Hrvati, God in the Croatians, that's what's kept us strong all these years, thousands of years of faith of the good Croatian people. And uh, yeah, that is, to me, that's one of the high points every year. That's Dravo Diego, that Yepanasha Domovino, and hearing people say, Raiska Diego Kralice Karvata. You cry when you watch the picture, you know, everybody going around the Alkari carrying Gospa and girls in the Noshnya. And then here, it's you play a part in it. I play a part, everybody plays a part, and we contribute to everything. And it's just, it's, it's our day to celebrate Gospa Sinska for everything that she's done for us. The Croatian diaspora is. They, I would say they have double life. On one side, they are very nostalgic, they are very emotionally tied to the place, the country, and the people they came from. On the other side, they settled in, let's say, in Chicago, and they have their own families. They made their own friends. They became Americans. They speak English well. They settled in Chicago, they're at home in Chicago, they're at home at St. John's. Colors bright and blue, emblems of virtue pure and true. We live to honor all day true, St. Jerome's colors white and blue. We got the best education here, yes. I mean a lot of prominent people came from this neighborhood, and it, it uh, gives credit to the teaching at St. Jerome School, mm -hmm. really. It was very rigid, but very fair. So I was raised and went to school there with my brothers and sisters. There were six of us. I made my communion. My children went here, and my grandchildren have gone here. And actually, if I go up to the first and second cousins, there was 59 of us that graduated so far from St. Jerome's. I think my objective and the objective of the Franciscans before us is to, to make people feel at home. This is where they belong. This is where they met their friends. Many of them met their wives and husbands. Many of them started their families at St. Jerome's. My wife's uh, grandparents were married here back in 1913. Uh, my in-laws uh, were married here, Chris's parents were married here in 1945, I believe, and Chris and I were married here in 1970, and my daughter uh, was married here in uh, 2005. So, so there's four generations. Now, I, I suppose that happens elsewhere, but a rarity. I mean, just you're not going to see that in today's world where people are so dispersed and all over the world and the country. And we're just so proud to be Croatian. I yeah. can't explain it, what it is. Because so I love my church, I love Bridgeport to death. 
I love living and here. And I'll second that motion. Uh, we had wonderful times. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Our mm -hmm. church really kept us all together. Right. I would if I if I won the um, the lottery, lottery, I would never move. Never, never would I move.